Hello Geeks and Gamers, Matt Lemke here with True Gamer Goggles, Gamer-Goggles.com. Today I have another flip through for you. This is Bestiary 6. Uh, Paizo has gone ahead and done another monster book. And this one, uh, is, I, technically if you count the Monster Codex, I guess it's the 7th. Uh, as you flip through, it's got the table of contents, basically what you need to read the book. Um, and then it starts diving right into creatures. And immediately one stood out to me, and that is an alter ego. Alter Egos are basically hags that are created from some traumatic experience and they represent a creature's personality outside of said creature. Uh, could be a PC, could be an NPC, could be a monster. Uh, and basically what's another thing that's important about them is uh, they're not flesh and blood. And then, uh, well, one big, big thing about this book is the Four Horsemen. Uh, we're going to right now talk about the horses of the apocalypse. Basically, they all have a breath weapon. They are all a CR-25. They have crushing hooves, energy drain, favor of the four, and unyielding. And basically, favor of the four gives them thematic abilities based on the horsemen that, or, yeah, the horsemen that they serve. Uh, for example, the pale horse has additional spell-like abilities of death knell, sands of time, Slay the Living, and his breath weapon is gross. Uh, 20 D8 points of negative energy damage. Ouch. Uh, so, from there, we move into Arch Devils. Arch, Arc Devils. And basically, Arc Devils are very powerful beasts. Uh, these are wild. They're not beasts. They're devils, right? And they are 10th level mythical creatures, uh, well, 10th level, 10th mythic rank creature. They're not, you know, not levels. Uh, each has a cult following, and some of them actually have major artifacts. Uh, so why do they exist? Well, you can create a campaign totally around the, the layers of hell with the uh, information that's given here. There's one arch devil for each, to, co to command each of the layers of hell. Uh, and we kind of, you know, we're going to, like I said, we're not going to spend a lot of time on some of these. Uh, what did I like about the Arch Devils? Well, they're founded in myth and lore, but besides that, they're pretty broken. Um, when I say broken, I mean they're powerful. You know, and they should be. But what I like is the fact that they put a cult with each one to represent uh, the, their personality and how they would... Uh, influence other people uh, and that's how that's how you can tie it into your store blights blights are basically uh druid exp experiments of trying to create something out of nature that is savage uh for war gone wrong and now blights exist and they're pretty much um, a dread on the world and there's a lot of blights uh planner dragons is the next the next big i mean there's some new clockworks in the book uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time on them. Do some dinosaurs, demons, and devils. Uh, the Fallen is actually one of my favorite creatures in the book. But I think we get to dragons first. We do. The uh, planar dragons, though, there's, you know, outside of showing you some of the pictures, uh, basically I, they, they work primarily like other dragons. But uh, what makes them unique is they're from outer planes. And when they're on uh, the material plane, they basically create their layer to reflect what they're like on, or what their home world is like. So it's a home away from home type of thing. Um, and they do a real good job of balancing the powers and the abilities with the other creatures. Now this, however, is an Elder Worm. And the Elder Worm is a CR-24 creature. Uh, well, he's a dragon, two heads, six legs, um, pair of wings. There's the Empirals, again, you know, some of this stuff I'll go into more detail in the written review. Uh, then we have we have Enterthropes, which is one of the first uh, PC possible uh, races, and they're basically insect-like creatures. Uh, there's a Were Mantis, Were Wasp, Were Spider. Those are the three examples they give you. Uh, there's instructions here, I believe. Maybe they're in the back. I thought I saw instructions on how to create your own um, and throw parades when I was looking through it earlier. Uh, then the Fallen. The Fallen is the next one. The Fallen. These guys are basically crusaders for the righteous dead that can't pass into afterlife. And these guys come back 
and they go on a crusade to attack the world uh, in their own twisted form of belief because of the despair of the righteous warriors in. I just thought it was really cool. It's one of the better, lower uh, challenge rating creatures in the book. Uh, some new giants. Uh, Goblin Monkey is one of the new races. Uh, he has a prancel tail. There's new golems. Some great old ones, which pretty powerful creatures, right? And next is next up is Caillou. Well, no, I lied. How is that? The Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Horsemen of the Apocalypse are well, pretty much beyond the scope of uh, what your PCs can handle in a game. So, what do I have to say about them? Well, again, they're a tenth rank creature. Uh, they were all mortal beings at one point in time. Only one of any horsemen can uh, exist at a time. Each has their own cult. They all have abilities uh, to reflect their personality. Um, so, Apollon has uh, a major artifact, also Usher of Black Rain, which is, as an artifact should be, pretty gross, especially in his hands, right? Uh, and then we have... Sharon, uh, who is a CR 30. We have Zareel and Chalmarixian. And now, so if they're beyond scope of reaching with your uh, PCs, how, how can you possibly use them? Well, you can create a whole campaign around them. Um, they're kind of iconic in the sense that uh, your PCs are mortal, so if they don't become immortal, they probably won't be able to deal with them. So that could be all part of your mythic portion of your campaign. Or you can, you know, just have the cult uh, be a reflection of them in the world and you end up trying to thwart the cult and have your your PCs interact with the uh, horsemen rather minimally. Because remember, uh, horsemen's... CRs are 27 to 30, while the horse in itself is like a 26, I think it was. So if you actually have a four, one of the four horsemen on a horse, it's pretty disgusting. And if they all appear in the same place, well, the world's over, right? So uh, the next up is the different types of Caillou. And Varclops is probably my favorite picture in the book. Uh, I watched a lot of Godzilla as a child, and this really reminds me of Ghidorah. And... Uh, so basically, this guy, the Varclops, is really good at fighting other Caillou one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. If he has to fight more than one, he kind of like loses some of his abilities. Uh, then there's the Vorgozen, the Arthun, and uh, then uh, the next thing... Uh, well, okay, I'll stop for a moment and we'll, we'll talk about Krampus. Krampus has... Uh, well, Krampus is a legendary demon of mythical war. Uh, I don't. I don't know if he's actually got any kind of subtitle like that in reality, uh, but one of his things is he's got mythical chains, and they function as a, a plus three spiked chain right here. Counts as an evil weapon, um, but they're also non magical, and if he doesn't carry or wield them, he's considered just they're they're disarmed. Wait. Oh, yeah. If they become unwielded or destroyed in combat or whatever, he can create a new set of chains as a standard action. I thought that was cool. Uh, it really kind of makes them a little bit unique. And then uh, the next may well, these guys are like a PC race, and they're basically telepaths that are really good at object reading. Uh, that's, that's, you know, the Minarvi. Uh, but uh, the next one I want to talk about, they're actually shapeshifters, and they're the Rugaru. And these guys basically can beast, chain, beast shape one um, it, it as a swift action from uh, a wolf into their standard form. Uh, among other things, they have natural claws and things like that. They're really, I just kind of, I found them to be cool. The other thing that stood out on my initial look through the book is troops. Troops are a new subtype, and they're right there. They're a new subtype that can be used when creating monsters. Uh, they have a few examples. The goblin uh, troop is really cool. One of the things they note is 
that you can upgrade the troop types also like you can make an elite troop you can make a phalanx troop uh, just a rabble and it changes the d d difficulty level of the challenge rating so for example um, the goblin troops have overwhelm so a goblin troop deals 3d6 damage with its troop attack to foes whom it shares space uh, so they're kind of like a, a goblin mob and then in the back they have an updated version of the monster creation charts uh, from the core rules and the last thing that's pretty important for you because some of you might have noticed uh, while I was flipping through that they didn't actually tell you everything about everything so on page 317 there's an ability index with a breakdown of where you can find the abilities if you don't have them in this book or you know and you have the other books also you can use the, the wiki online I'm sure you can find a lot of these, uh, but the CR is Core Rules and OA, which is somewhere over here and so a few other places, is uh, Occult Adventures. So, what do I think of Beast of 86? I have to admit that uh, I was leery when they first said they were going to come out with it. And I'm like, my gosh, how can you come up with more monsters? Uh, but, they did a really good job. The Arch Devils uh, were not quite what I expected, and I liked the approach that they did with that and with the Four Horsemen. Uh, now, admittedly, I was expecting the Four Horsemen to be a little bit more biblical, but hindsight, or not hindsight, after reading through it, it made me realize that that would not have been a good interpretation for them. Because if you take the Four Horsemen and apply them to a role-playing game, well, one, the, the biblical community might get pretty upset with you. Uh, two, uh, you'd have to introduce Christianity into the role-playing game in a sense. So by creating their own um, higher, not hierarchy, yeah, well, maybe it is a hierarchy because there's different challenge ratings, but by creating their own background and the whole apocalyptic portion of the uh, adventure, you, you have a lot more freedom as a GM to use them the way you see fit. And I think that was actually really smart. Uh, as a whole, I think the book has a lot of high-level challenges to it. But uh, some of the lower-powered ones, there's some real good gems. Um, and so, I like it. I'm glad that I have this book. I'm glad that uh, it was recommended to me to pick up and somebody was asking for me to do the uh, flip-through on this book. It's a, it's a real gem. If you have players that are ready to embark onto this type of thing, you'll have a blast with this book. Oh, uh, So, if you enjoyed any part of this video, please hit the like button, share, please share, Pinterest, everything, just get it out there. Um, and subscribe. I really want to grow this year. I want to hit 1,500 subscribers by, by December 31st. That's like seven months. That's maybe 100 subscribers a month, which might seem unrealistic, but I've got some things in the works in the background that might make things out anyway. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day. I hope you enjoyed the video.